Uh, it's noon central time here in Alabama. We're going to have a pretty hot day today. We'll be in the 90s and it's been um, <laughs> humid. Uh, we should get some rain here maybe later this afternoon. We could really use some. It is the first day of July, Friday, July the 1st. Uh, we are more than halfway through now the garden party down under. So if you are one of those uh, speedy people who have kept up every single month, and I know there are some of you <laughs> who have, uh, that's great. The I think this month's applique block is the easiest one we have uh, of the entire, well, maybe not, but it's pretty close. It's, it's fairly easy. We'll talk about it again in a few minutes. Um, and I know a lot of the speedy people jumped on the shoe fly blocks, and maybe you've already got all four of the shoe fly blocks done. Those appear in months six, seven, eight, and nine. But what if you're not caught up? Uh, I'm teaching a local class here, and the Sunday so and so's are also working on the, this quilt. And every time I'll post that the new month is up, somebody will say, Oh gosh, but I'm not done last month, or Oh, I'm still on month three. That's okay. I think this particular block of the month was kind of front loaded with a, the first block being the most time consuming in the very first month. And then the second month was fairly um, complex as well with the applique borders and the pieced borders or the um, dog tooth borders. So the nice thing to know if you're not caught up, if you're still on month one or still on month two, as we get into these later months, they are faster to make. You will have mastered your technique, whatever it is that you're doing, um, the method that you want to use, or you're trying, as I encourage people to do, a, make this a sampler of techniques and try some different things on the various blocks so you can find out which method of applique you like the best, um, those kind of things. It's If you were trying to enter international competition, that might not be a good idea because a judge might say, how come this was done raw edge and this was done turned? But uh, it's for your own learning purposes, it's a great idea for you to try some different things. So um, as I said, don't worry if you are behind the, um, turn my phone to silent, okay? Um, because you're not really behind, you're just, uh, just kind of getting to the next step. And these later months, as I'm here to tell you, are going to go much faster than the first few months are. So um, don't worry about that. Um, okay, I am going to switch to the document camera so you can, we'll talk about the applique block for this month. Okay, which is block number 10, according to the chart. So let me pull up the document camera. Okay, this is the one I say that it's fairly easy. We have one large urn and it doesn't have additional pieces. It just has one piece. It's a real pretty little shape. I like this urn a lot. And I used one of my favorite, all-time favorite fabrics. This fabric's probably 25 years old. And I just, um, I just love the colors of it. The next thing to see about this is that the, there are four stems, but they're straight. Unlike most of the other vines that we've had so far or stems, there's a bit of a curve to those others. These are straight. And if you just wanted to make them from straighter grain fabric, that would be a snap, be no problem at all. I'll show you again how I do my simple little stems. And I did these that way. I cut a piece of fabric, and this is straight grain because I'm showing how I would do this for these are just straight of grain. But I would do the same thing if it was biased. But I would cut a strip of fabric three times the finish size that I want. So I want these stems to be approximately a quarter of an inch. And three times a quarter is three quarters. So I cut a piece of fabric here. This happens to be a real pretty little piece of batik. Three quarters of an inch with a, you know, rotary cutter and rule. Then I went to my iron and I, let me move this up. You can see on the white section here. I turned in about a quarter of an inch on the one side. I turned in about a quarter of an inch down the other side. The only thing I'm making sure is that this top one doesn't, isn't sticking out on the bottom, that it's just uh, going to be behind there. Then I used either spray starch or best press. You could just use water for steam if you wanted to and give it a really good hard press. Let the iron sit on it as it dries. And now I have just a, a real simple little quarter of an inch. This one's straight grain because these could go right here on this block. No sewing, no trimming, none of that. 
when I make the eighths of an inch seam, and I've tried a few of those um, this year on this project, making the eighths of an inch, I do do the sewing method with Karen K. Buckley's bias bar uh, seam, her bias bars for the eighth, because I simply couldn't cut this three eighths of an inch and then use my fingers on a hot iron to turn it in an eighth on each side. I, I just couldn't do that. So I follow her directions and I make them with a sewn seam down the back, trim it away, and then using the bias bar, um, make it nice and flat and pressed to so have a, an eighth of an inch seam. But I, my motto, and many of you have heard this many times, is that I want the fastest method that gives me the result I want. So for making these very straight, simple little stems, there's only four of them, a quarter of an inch, this is the fastest method for me. Cut a three quarter of an inch um, piece of fabric, turn in one side, turn in the other, press it hard, and it's done. So that's the story on that one. The next thing about this block is that there is only one shape in these leaves. There's uh, the baby bears, the mama bears, and the papa bears. There's small ones, mediums, and large ones, but it's the same shape. So the only part of this that gets a little tricky is turning under those little pointy parts. Um, so you just do the best you can with those and get those where you want them. So this was a pretty straightforward uh, and easy block to do for this month. Okay, I'm going to put this back on the wall and then I'm going to talk about our shoe fly blocks again. Give me half a second. All right, in a few minutes, you'll see where that went on the wall. All right, so now, last month, those of you who were here with the live, um, I talked about an easy way to draw those pencil lines on the 16 two and a half inch, well, the instructions in the pattern say to cut these two and three quarters. Two and a half will do it. 100% precise would have told you to cut them two and three eighths, but I always bump it up that next little eighth. So two and a half and two and a half is five. I cut a white fabric square, that's the half of the half square triangle of white, that's five inches. And someone in the live, and I'm sorry I don't remember who you are, and if you're here today, jump in right now on your comments and say, yes, that was me. Because you mentioned that if it were you, not only would you um, take the white square that's five inches, draw your diagonal lines from corner to corner, which gave you the diagonal line you need, but you would also then marry it up to a five inch square of colored fabric and you would sew it first. And absolutely that's right. Now I didn't do it that way because I had cut all 16 of the colored squares at two and a half inches. So I had all stack of those and I, I didn't need to do it this way. But if I had thought about it ahead of time, which I, I wish I had, I would have had cut the squares, the big white squares and the colored squares. So because for every shoe fly block, we need 16, let's see if I get this right. We need 16 squares that are two and a half. And I can get four of those out of these, this five inch square, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. So I would need four white squares and four colored squares to give me all of the half square triangles that I need for the this month's one shoe fly block. But you're making four of those all together. So four times four is 16. So you could cut 16 five inch backgrounds and 16 different um, colored squares, five inches, and marry those up and make them. And then you'd have 16, a variety of 16. If you only make four and you put the whole block together with the four, you only have four colors to make the eight shoe fly blocks. But um, that's what I should have done. And I, I wish I'd thought about that. So whoever you were last month at the live who said that, um, definitely I wanted to, to bring that up again. Because at, again, as I mentioned, not everybody is 100% caught up. And that's one of the advantages to being behind because sometimes we come up with these brilliant ideas a month after the fact. So here is uh, what we would, what I'm talking about with the sew first method. A five inch white square, a five inch colored square. This one happens to be bright turquoise. I drew a pencil line from corner to corner, and then I simply ran it through the machine and did a quarter inch seam down this side of uh, the pencil line and a quarter inch on the other side, turned it around and did the other side. If you were working on 16 of these, you can just speed chain piece one right after the other. Boom, 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 boom. It takes me longer to talk about it than it would for you to actually do it. 
then you cut them apart. You cut a five inch square in half this way, so that's five, cut that in half is two and a half by two and a half. Then you cut on the diagonal lines as I've done here. And then you take them to the iron. I like to press toward the darker side. You could also press them open if that's your preferred method. So I, this one has already been pressed and trimmed. I actually, this is just a recap of what I showed in the video the other day. And uh, the video went up hmm, Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, but it, it shows this technique. But I wanted to talk about it in the live in case you hadn't seen the video yet. So this one's been trimmed already. And then this one is ready to be trimmed. The only thing you have to remember is what size it's supposed to be. And the instructions in the pattern clearly tell you that this should be trimmed to two and three quarters. It's going to be a two and a quarter inch finished half square triangle. So I need to make it two and three quarters so, because I'm adding the seam allowance. Let me see if I can do this sitting down. I got my, all right. So the first thing I do as I'm getting ready to trim this, uh, trimming half square triangles, is I place the diagonal line on the point. I wanna make sure that I've got a, um, the diagonal line on the center, okay? And I go get that just right, come straight up, straight over, okay? And now I turn it around 180 degrees. That was the first cut and it's important because it gets you started. But the second cut is critical because it's going to determine what size these little half square triangles are. So let me bring him back again. And now it's really critical that I get this just right. So I have to make sure I have the right line. And I'm gonna turn this ruler to where it makes sense. This is a new ruler um, to me and the lines are in a little different spot. I love these quilter select rulers. It's just making sure that I have the right side so that I cut it correctly. All right, so I've got the, um, that's one. Where did you go, Mr. Line? Okay. So I come back to the other side and I line these up. Again, keeping the diagonal straight and keeping the um, two. This one's a smaller one. Size, what seem? Oh, two inches, okay. Let me just cut this one for you. I come straight up and straight over. And you waste really very little fabric altogether, but I do check them. If you were to do this with the precise measurements, and every pattern is going to, if most patterns will give you the precise measurements, and I'll tell you to cut two and three eighths and two and three eighths, you have to do everything so perfect that way. You've got to draw the line exactly in the right spot. You've got to sew exactly a quarter inch on either side, cut them apart just right, press them totally flat to me. And then they, if you do all those things perfectly, it's supposed to be the right size. But I don't always do all those things perfectly. And I'm willing to waste a little bit of fabric for a whole lot of perfection. So that's how this part um, works. And I had this laying here ready. And while I was waiting to get ready for us this morning, I always have to have something to do while I'm watching the clock. And I'm using this technique on um, neutrals quilt that I'm making that has some pinwheels. And these are the exact same thing that you need using that same method. Now these are larger than the ones for um, this month's quilt, but I just had to do the math and figure out what size to make them. It generates that little, um, the two sets of squares that I showed you together generate and make eight half square triangles. And every, I need two pinwheels that are the same for the block and there's four half square triangles for this pinwheel and here's the other four that have to be laid out and it's just the fastest way for me to get these made uh, and it just really works out neat and I make them really fast I set them beside my machine for as leaders and enders while I'm doing other things and now this one now is just ready to be sewn together and then this one will be laid out and done the same so that's what we're doing on that so let's go back to the webcam I am going to encourage you, if you have any questions on Alex's live the other day, she said, now, if you have any questions for Barbara, you be sure to put those on there and do it on the forum. So, which is fine. I would love to answer your questions if you have any. Now, this is a holiday weekend here in the, the U.S. For Monday is the 4th of July, our Independence Day. And so um, there may not be very many of you here. I saw there were four of you here when we first started. So, um, but that's fine. So when I put that block back on the wall and get out of the way, the one I just put up there on the lower... Uh, left as we look at it here. These are the two little wall hangings that I'm making. I've told you that I'm not making a complete another one of these quilts because then I would have to quilt it as a large quilt as well. So the one in the upper right up there of course is month one and two and that one is done. It just needs to be uh, have a back put on it and batting and then I can quilt it. And then the one there in the middle is what I've been working on since the last month. I have five applique blocks and I have four pieced blocks. 
I also made the pieced diamond blocks. Those are a different size from the one we're going to do on ours. When we get to month 10, 11, and 12, we'll make the pieced diamond blocks or the diamond blocks. Irene, uh, the designer, appliqued those, her diamonds. I uh, calculated how to piece it because I'd much rather piece than applique. And I was doing them by machine and it was just, I couldn't fathom how I was going to get all those under the machine without them moving. So uh, there will be detailed instructions step by step if you wish to piece them. So these diamonds here are different size but same process. And so I just wanted to see what that would look like and I put those up there. What happened for me uh, with that particular block, <laughs> those that small wall hanging, some of those blocks are third appliques remember were 13 inches and I made them that size. But when I went to put them together, I have on the top and the bottom rows, I have two blocks that are 13 inches wide and the piece block is 12. That's 30, 20, that's 36. Let's see if I got that. 12, 13, 26, and 38. But the middle row has two 12 inch piece blocks and one 13 inch piece blocks. So I actually have different size sashing on the top and bottom rows than I do on the middle row. And they're not going to align because they're different sizes, but they're, that's just the way it worked out. And I'm fine with that. It's different. It'll look like a design element. And it just like, well, that's just what I had to do because I had pieced those, uh, applique the blocks to be 13 inch blocks. So I couldn't trim them down to 12 and a half or I would have chopped off some of the, the motifs. So um, I do like the, I love a pieced border on an applique quilt and I'm real tickled with that diamond border. So I like that real well. So uh, once we finish the live today, I'm going to take that all down and sew it all together. All the parts are stuck up there on the wall and it's just a simple matter. The top two rows are sewn together, but the bottom row now has to be joined and um, put in my floater borders that go all around and then finally the diamond border. So I'll have that one as a, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with those two wall hangings yet. I've got some ideas. Um, we may end up on my blog doing a, a giveaway or something like that. So we'll have to see, it'll, it'll come to me when we get there. So, um, okay. Now what I thought I would do um, just for to have do a little bit more here to show you some things is to tour the website a little. I've done it before in depth, but um, I'll tour a little bit here. So I'm going to share my screen and show you that. Okay. Oh, there's that one. Okay. Oh, good. I will get back to questions in a minute. All right, so when you come to the forum, this is the, the main landing screen, and it says you are here, forum. So I've, I've logged in, it says, welcome, Barbara. It's got my face over there, so I know I'm logged in, and I'm in the forum. When I'm on the forum, here's the various sections of the forum, classrooms and lives, block of the month, et cetera, quilting-related questions. Um, down here at the bottom, the Quilt Show website, forum questions, troubleshooting, um, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot there. The one section that I'm going to go to just today, obviously, is block of the month. And every let me just mention that see all of these blocks of the month that go back to, to day one, the first one, 2009. All of the form stuff, here's the first one, 2009. It was one of my favorite ones. It was Sue Garman Stars for a New Day. And there are 207 topics there with 5,679 replies. That's all still there. So if uh, you had questions about those, somewhere in there are the questions. You'll find a lot of information. But let's go look at today's, the one we're working on. Block of the part, block 2022, Garden Party Down Under. Okay, so um, when you come up to it, if you um, have, look at the topics that are already there. I always, for each month, put two topics in month seven, ask questions here. And I posted that on June the 29th. And um, then I also have, for each month, show your progress here. I Yesterday, uh, up or two days ago, last year, I wrote a detailed step-by-step -step blog on how, or post, on how to upload photos to the forum. And I realized that I hadn't put it here on Block of the Month 22 because when I wrote it last summer, we were working on 21. So I just the other day stuck this in here again so that you could find it. And it shows a lot of step-by-step -step and pictures. It talks about resizing your pictures. If you try to add a picture and it doesn't appear, it's almost certainly because it's too large and you have to resize it smaller. So um, let me show you. Now I want to take you here to this one. Month six, show your progress here. 
And it's always great when people put their pictures here so that we can see them. When you first come into here, at least for me, it comes into a latest activity. This one just, I saw this a few minutes ago. Dorothy P has posted pictures. So here's the first thing to see. I'm sure if she looked at this, she goes, oh no, how come is it sideways? Because I bet she didn't take a picture of it sideways. But if you click on the picture, ah, it's magic. It's now not sideways anymore. It's straight up and down. So great job, Dorothy P. And you can zoom on it and see what it looks like. Look what she did in her middle. She did English paper piecing, but no Dresden plates for her. She did very small, and those are very small. Remember, those are little hexagons. Think how small they must be, because that's only a four-inch square in there, and she's got a good half an inch on either side. So that's a terrific solution uh, for her to want to do something and make it her own. So if you're looking to see what other people have done for each month, notice that on this top bar of this topic, the topic is month six, show your progress here, and it's under the category block of the month 2022 garden party down under. Gives you an idea where you are. Let's click on photos. And what photos does is it brings all of the photos. There are 34 photos in this topic, month six, show your progress here. There's three pages of pictures. And here they are. And you don't have to read the wording. You, now, the d downside is it doesn't tell you who posted it. And if you do want to find out more from this person, you will go back into where we just were and um, go through the pages until you find the person's name. This one is one that I'm particularly fond of. This is Pamela's. She's using these gorgeous Daiwabo fabrics. Just so beautiful. It's, it's Man, it's pretty. And um, so there's that one that I really like and come back okay and then here's a crooked one obviously we can go to the next page and you can just see the pictures which is really really cute if you just want to see there are several people making black dark backgrounds so that's really cool this one this is so pretty alex actually showed this on the live the other day uh, this is one of our longtime members and i had her name a second ago and it's escaped me at the moment but that is really beautiful. But neutral fabrics on a dark gray charcoal background. Boy, that's pretty. Uh, and then there's all these other wonderful ones as well. Um, that one's one of mine. Let's see that one. And just different ones like that. And so that's just a way that you can see the pictures, which is really cool. And yeah, that's the one I just showed you that was just posted um, this morning. Um, okay. Another thing I'm going to show you is the search the forum box. So if you were looking for that particular post that I wrote about how to upload fabrics or upload photos, go to the search the forum box, upload photos, and see what happens. All right. And there it comes. I started a topic this year. I put it in this year's. But before that, it, I, and I put it in D. Christopher's classroom. I put it in Alex's classroom. I put it in Ricky's classroom. And I put it in the 2021 Color My World. So everybody could find it if they went back and looked. So that's how easy that was to search the forum. Um, okay. The other thing I'm going to show you on the learn, and then I'll go look at some questions. All right. Under learn, which is where you know to find the patterns, um, now, we click on Garden Party Down and uh, takes us back here. And uh, the introduction still has a lot of good information. If you want to see the monthly layout guide of what's coming next, that's that great piece that we have. It's right here in this very first um, folder or, or category, and you'd click on View. Then we've got month one, two, three, four, five, six. We're on month seven. And down here at the very bottom is all these lives. Everyone that, uh, if you wanted to see the live I did last month or the one I did early uh, in the, the year, you would find them here. You just click on the, the view and it lists them all and you can click right there. Some people say to me, I don't know how to find your blog. Well, there it is right there. Uh, you could also Google my name and it will show up as well. But that's how you can find the blog right there. Uh, my blog comes out twice a month or twice a week. Wednesday and Sunday, typically. All right, so that just gives you some more ideas of how you can uh, get around and look at different kind of things. So let me go back to oh, webcam. Alrighty, cool. Okay, let me see what else I wanted to tell you. And then I'm gonna go look for questions. Okay, all right, so I can look for questions see what we've got here. All right, several 
sort of a good mornings. It's nice when everybody says where they are. Okay, Oakland, Tennessee, Arizona. All righty. Okay, San Antonio. I want to go to San Antonio. I'm working on a going to Texas in February for a class. So if you know anybody in any stores or guilds that want to bring me, I'd love to hear from them so we can tag on to that trip that's happening in February. All right, uh, Australia. Somebody's here. Helen's here from Australia. Hello, hello. Thanks for the review and fun. Good. Okay. All righty. Good. Got that. And a couple people are saying that their pictures are a little um, hazy, and so John's asking. John's at the other end of the country helping me there, um, taking care of things. <laughs> okay. Victoria wants to go to Texas with me. All righty. I thought I had seen some questions before. Oh, there's Terry South. Hello, Terry. Glad to see you here. Terry was in a guild that I went and talked to, and we just sort of bonded right away. Good. You know, it's a great thing about being a quilter. If you have to move and go someplace else, there's other, you, you can find your tribe pretty easily and because other people are there. All right. Some people have good pictures, some not so much. Okay, here, on Julie. All right, I'm planning to make Garden Party down on next year. She's saving my pattern on my laptop as I watch the video, so I'm truly ready to... Excellent. Very good. The um, We will remind people a lot, starting in November, December, that the patterns... The, the Quilt Show only has the rights to these patterns for the month, uh, for the year, 2022. And after December 31st, we no longer have the rights to provide anyone those patterns. They revert to the um, designer, who then sells them. So we will rem start reminding people in November to make sure if you aren't all cut up or you're saving the patterns to make sure that you save them. And hard drives crash and people lose things. Um, that I understand that happens. We still can't give you those patterns after December 31st, 2022. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to use some um, backup uh, thumb drive or and additionally that kind of stuff. I'm old school, so I would have paper copies, but still, it's great to have them for uh, on your on a thumb drive or some way that you can download the patterns when you're ready to work on them. Okie dokie. Minnesota finishing up month four and have month five prep. That's right. Well, good. So that, that's just what I wanted to, if you're not 100% right where we are, and I don't think most everybody is in of the many, many people working on this quilt are going to be absolutely up, up to date. If you are, that's wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. <laughs> But if you're not, don't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get cut up. You will. You just have to, you know, work on it a little bit at a time. Little bit, little bit. Another Australian, Brisbane Australian, glad to be up. That is early. That's a good 15 hours from here, at least 15 hours. So she got up early to be with us. Uh, hello, Michelle. Great to see you. And okay, so I can... I have seen all of that and come back over here. Okay. Um, every month I think, oh, this one, I don't have a whole lot to say this time. So, so this won't take long. And I always manage to talk longer than I think I would. So uh, today I think that I'm, I'm not going to have too much more to say. Um, oh, I do want to mention that, um, let me check my list, make sure I said everything. All right. Normally we meet here on the live on the first Friday of every month. In August, I will be in Long Beach, California at International Quilt Festival there. And if you happen to go to that show, I'd love you to stop by and say hello. I will be, uh, the three days of the show, I will be at Open Studios most of the time. I will be presenting five different two-hour free classes at Open Studios. Um, some of my best tips and things like that. And there's five of them that are different. So they're at Open Studio. So if you're in Long Beach, come. Um, the So the date, I won't be able to do the live on the first uh, uh, Friday in August. So it might be the 12th, but we'll figure that out and announce it. I'm also in three weeks from now going to be at um, Salt Lake City. We have a summer festival in Salt Lake City this year. And so I will be in the education office most of that time. But if you are there for that show, that is July 21st to the 23rd at the convention center in Salt Lake City, I'd love to see you. Just to pop your head in and say hello. Uh, everybody knows what I look like, but I don't know what the rest of you look like. So uh, be sure you say hello and uh, I'd love to to chat for a, a minute or two. And um, every time I see someone at an event who's working on the block of the month, that's the first thing they tell me. Oh, I'm working on the block of the month and here's how far along I am. 
but I never ask people, and my students, local students know this too. I, don't, I won't see you a year later and go, well, did you finish yet? I will never ask people that. You know, you tell me at what stage you're at. And um, so that's how that part goes. So next month, the block of the month is one that I'm not planning to do, the, uh, the applique block. And my shoe flies are done. I'm not making more of those. But it is a, a terrific little block. And you can see that one again on that. We have that layout guide that tells you exactly what we're doing. You can see the pictures of Irene's blocks for that. And this one's a pretty good one. It's got a great big jug and one shape of flower uh, leaf petal. There are three different sizes, but uh, it's the exact same shape. So that tends to make the block that much faster to do. So next month, there's one applique block and one shoe fly block. If you're done your shoe fly blocks, that's um, great. And then you only have to do the applique block. So um, I do go back and look at, at Facebook and YouTube. I can't go back in and answer the comments, I don't think. But Facebook, I can. So if you think of a question or I haven't seen it yet, um, know that I'll be checking those here shortly and um, be able to answer you again. So uh, anyway, I hope that wherever you are, that uh, the weather is good for you and that things are, are, are happy and that you'll spend some time with the people that you love. And until next time, that's a wrap.